In this video, I will explain you everything you need to know about databases as a DevOps engineer. We will start by understanding what is a database and how do we actually use it, what are different types of databases, when to use them, what are different database concepts, and lot more. So if you want to understand databases properly, make sure to watch this video till the end. And if you are new to CloudChamp, make sure to subscribe. Most of you watch the video, but why not subscribe? So please subscribe and let's start with the video. All right, let's begin by understanding what is a database. We all know database is a very important component in an application. But to give you some definition, database is a structured way to store, retrieve and manage data. Consider you have an application and the user is entering some data in the application, which goes and stored inside a database. So a database could be used to store user information such as login details, or it could also be used to store application information. So in the definition here in DevOps, databases are essentially for storing everything from user data and application states to logs and metrics. To give you some example, you can see a banking application could store information or their data in a database this way, where they have account ID, account type, amount, date, etc. Similarly, an online application such as Amazon would store the data of their products using this format. So here they have the product ID, name, description, price, etc. Or if you're storing application data in the database, it could be in the key value pair. So here we have different types of data inserted inside a database. For different data, we need different databases. So different types of databases include two primary types, the SQL or structured query language and no SQL, which stands for not only structured query language. Let's try to understand the SQL part first. Let's focus on SQL first. SQL stands for structured query language, which is a programming language to store and manage data inside a relational database. So SQL is also known as relational database, whereas no SQL is also known as non-relational database. Now focusing on SQL first, SQL has primary two different types. The first type is this, which is stands for OLTP or online transaction processing. So OLTP and this other type here is known as OLAP. So online analytical processing. Now all these databases are used for transactional purposes, whereas databases such as Redshift or Snowflake which store huge amount of data are used for analysis purposes. If you look into the document by Snowflake, you can see here the difference between OLAP and OLTP is that OLAP is used for complex data analysis, while OLTP is used for real time processing of online transaction at scale. So whenever you have a requirement where you need to analyze some data, you might be using OLAP databases such as Snowflake, Redshift, etc. Where you have requirement to do online transaction processing, if you're storing uh, transactional data, you would be using OLTP. As a DevOps engineer, you might be working on both of these different databases types. So it is important for you to have knowledge. Let's begin by understanding OLTP or online transaction processing databases. So we have different databases here like SQL Server, Oracle DB, IBM DB2, MySQL, PostgreSQL, MariaDB, SQLite and more. So here SQL Server, Oracle Server and IMDB are three enterprise databases that are used by enterprise companies whereas MySQL and Postgres here are open source databases. If you are thinking of learning databases, you should always start with either MySQL or PostgreSQL because these are the very common ones that we use in DevOps. I would recommend you starting with Postgres database. Postgres is a very powerful open source relational database that is used by many applications to store all kinds of data, which could be login data, transactional data and lot, lot more. I would recommend you starting out with Postgres, installing it on your server, setting up database, creating tables, adding data and lot more. So if you want to see an example of how data is stored inside a relational database, this is what it looks like. So you have rows and columns and you use SQL query language to manage data inside this. In SQL database, the schema is fixed and you have to follow a pattern where you add information like this. Most of you might have a question. What is the difference between a database and a spreadsheet? You can also input the same data inside an Excel sheet and it will work the same, which is actually true. But when using databases, you can actually query the data to find what you want. For example, if you are using spreadsheet for just 10 records, that's OK. But if you have thousands of records and you want to search something, it is going to be very difficult. While using databases, you can run query and fetch the data exactly what you want. For example, if you want to find out the employee who started at this particular time, what is it, uh, what is the ID and so on, you can easily do that by running queries. I will explain you what queries are and also how to actually work in this video. Now let's talk about non-relational databases that stands for no SQL. This no SQL is not only SQL. So along with SQL, it provides you with more features. 
Now, in NoSQL databases, there are different types, which includes document databases, key value databases, column family databases, graph databases, time series databases, and there are a lot, lot more. So, if you want to know the popular databases, I have noted down here. In the document databases, you have the popular ones, which include MongoDB and AWS alternative for it, which is AWS Document DB. If you are going to start out, always MongoDB. MongoDB is a very popular option, and they have free option, also enterprise option. You can easily install MongoDB on your servers and start working on it. Next is key value pair. AWS has a very popular key value database, which is DynamoDB. Again, a very popular NoSQL database, which is also serverless, highly scalable. So if you have applications that needs to handle millions of traffic, DynamoDB is the answer for you. Similarly, you also have in-memory databases here like Redis and Memcached. So in-memory databases are usually inserted before a database as a middleman to get the data to the end users very quickly. If you are using Redis, Redis will stay somewhere here. And rather than users getting the information directly from the database, they will get the information from the Redis. And Redis is going to cache the frequently accessed data from the database. This way, the load is not directly in, on the database. So this is an example of in-memory database used for caching. And the very popular option is Redis. So I have included Redis here. Similarly, you have other databases as well. Once you understand the different types of databases, to actually work on them and to manage data inside it, you will need to learn the queries. So what are queries? Query in a database is a request for information or an operation on the data stored in the database. So if you want to create a new table in the database, or if you want to insert some data, you want to find something, you want to delete the table, you will need to run a query. Typically, a query is written in an SQL language for relational databases. So I have some examples here. So here is a select query to get something from the database. So we are saying select the name department from the employee table where the value of department is sales. You also have an insert query here to insert data inside a table. So you're saying insert into employee table all this information for Jane Doe marketing and this salary. Similarly, for a NoSQL database like a MongoDB, you will run the query in this format where you have database employees find from this particular uh, database. On this channel, there are many projects which uses databases. There's also a microservices project which uses PostgreSQL along with MongoDB. PostgreSQL is used to store the login information. The MongoDB is used to store the videos and the audios. So if you want to learn databases, make sure to check out the microservices application project to convert video into audio, where I have used Python along with Postgres and MongoDB. Now to give you some more example, I'm going to be showing you how queries actually work. I have MongoDB installed on my EC2 instance, and I'm going to be running queries to show you how to manage data inside a database. So I'm here on my EC2 instance, and I have installed PostgreSQL database on it. You can also see I'm connected to Postgres. To show you an example, we are going to be creating a database for a banking application and insert some data by running queries. This demo will help you understand how queries actually work and how to manage data inside a database. For this example, I'm using Postgres. You can also do the same thing by running queries for a MongoDB database or any other database. The queries might be different, but the idea is the same. So let's go ahead and create a database. Now to see existing databases, you will run backslash L, which is to list down all the databases you have. These are all the default databases, so let's create a new one. As I told you, we are going to be doing it for a banking application, so we run the queries for it. Here I'm saying create a database with the name banking app, backslash L, and you can see banking application is created. Next, let's go and connect to this banking app. To connect to it, you will say backslash C and the name of the database, which is banking app. It says you're now connected to a database banking app as a user in Postgres. Alternatively, you can also create new users, grant them permissions, provide them passwords, so you can connect to that database from a different location, maybe from another server or from your application. So I'm going to be creating a table inside this. Let's create a table with the name customers and also a table with the name accounts. So we are going to be creating a table with the name customers that will insert the data like customer ID, first name, last name, email, phone number, and when was it created. Once I do this, the table is created. I will do the same for accounts. So this is how you create a table inside a database. Inside this table, we are going to be inserting some data. So I'm inserting some random data inside the customer database table and then also in the accounts table. So here you can see the data is inserted when you get this output. Let's also do the same for accounts. I'm inserting account information, which includes the customer ID, account type and balance. So customer ID, customer ID, accounts type and balance. Once I do this, the data is now inserted. 
if you want to check data inside a particular table you will use a select query so as i've explained you inside the query section we use select query to retrieve data so we want to get all the data that we have stored now so i will say select star which means everything from customers table so this is a wildcard when you run this you get all the information but you can also specifically get information for example you need to only get the information for the person who has the last name as smith or maybe a person who has this phone number so you can say select this 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 from this particular table so you can customize your query according to what data you want to retrieve so this is how you can use queries to manage data inside a database all right now that you have practical understanding of how to manage data in a database using different queries let's understand some important database concepts that you should know when working on databases in production environments so there are different database concepts that a devops engineer should know starting with sharding so sharding is a very popular or a very common concept where you distribute a large database into different partitions also known as shards and these shards or different partitions are hosted on different servers so we partition data horizontally across multiple databases to improve performance this way each server is going to handle less data and there is going to be less load on it and this will improve performance next database concept is data model which is designing how do you want to put the data in the database and it includes normalization and denormalization normalization is where you have different tables to store all the data so you have different tables to store data and this will help you reduce duplication of data whereas in denormalization all the data is stored inside a single table for faster access so depending on your requirement if you want to get the data faster you might use denormalize where all the data is in a single table or if you want to reduce duplication you will be using normalized data where you have data in separate tables moving on the next database concept is replication so replication is where you replicate or create a copy of your database on different servers in different regions this is very common in cloud infrastructure so where you have a database and you replicate that database onto a different region such that if this database is down you can still access your application data on these servers because the data has been replicated the next is backup and restore we all know databases are very important and the data inside it is all we need for our business so we need to make sure that we replicate the data in case if the database is down we can restore it so we can do that using backup and restore so you take the backup or replicate all the data from the database store it somewhere in case the database is down you can restore it from that backup and we can create backups either manually or also automatically by using cloud features or by creating bash scripts similarly you also want to encrypt data inside the database the data might be very crucial and you don't want to expose it to hackers you can use encryption in aws encryption is done using aws kms or key management system this is done at rest whereas if you want the data to be encrypted at transit you will use ssl certificates for that so these are all different concepts we should know as a devops engineer now before we end this video let me give you the list of different devops tasks you will be doing with databases so let's look into common databases tasks for a devops engineer as a devops engineer you will be responsible to set up databases for your application so your common task would include database provisioning which is to create a database on cloud providers so you will be creating databases either on your servers or using managed services like rds sql azure databases and lot more there are two ways for creating databases in the cloud you can either do it through the console by clicking on it or you can do it by using tools like terraform so automating the creation of new databases using tools like terraform could be a common database task next is performance tuning if your database is not working properly you will need to check what is the problem and you need to optimize queries for better results this is another common task which is to analyze and add indexes to improve slow sql queries next is backup and restore as we have seen in this database concept you need to create backup for your databases creating a backup is very important for devops engineer so you should know how to create backups either using scripts the automated way or using the cloud consoles so automating periodic database backups and testing re restore processes for example you might set up a uh, daily backup for your postgres databases using a cron job if you don't know how to do that let me know in the comment section and maybe i can create a video explaining how to take a backup using a bash script and run that script every day or every week using cron job next is replication setup you need to make sure that your databases are replicated in multi az or multi region deployments so enable read replicas for aws rds could be a task next is monitoring alert monitoring zan alert to make sure the databases are working properly you need to get alerts you need to check metrics how much is the cpu how much is the ram 
So you can set up monitoring on your databases. This could also be a task. For example, using Datadog to monitor query execution time in MySQL. If your existing database is not enough to handle load, you might scale horizontally or you might scale vertically to handle more traffic. So partition user data from across multiple databases using shard, which is the concept of sharding. Next is security. If you want to make sure your database is encrypted, you might use SSL or KMS keys. Data migration, transferring data from one place to another is known as data migration. So you might have database set up in your local machine and then you want to set it up on the cloud. You will use the migration techniques to store the existing data from your local machine to the cloud. So for example, in Postgres, you can use PG dump utility to migrate data from one database to another. Next is database schema management, uh, which could also be a task. And lastly is disaster recovery planning. So this is all you need about databases. As a DevOps engineer, having this knowledge will help you start working on databases and you will be able to set up databases for your application. I hope this video was informative. If you have any questions, any doubt, let me know in the comment section. If you want me to share this uh, document or this PDF, let me know in the comment section. Thank you and have a good day.